And here are the answers to the questions that we looked at in the last lesson. Uh, the cladogram was constructed using DNA base sequences from six species, which node indicates the greatest difference in base sequences. Well, these points here are the nodes A, B, C, and D. They are the four possible nodes. Nodes are the places where some ancestor gives rise to three different groups here. An ancestor here gives rise to two different groups. Here, this ancestor B gives rise to one, and then it goes here, and then it branches into two again. So this has an, uh, an ancestor here in between. Sort of like this is the grandparent here, this node, then this is the parent node, and these are the two offspring nodes. And if you see it like that, the more further back you go, the more differences, the more ancient that it is, which is how you should see it. It means if you wanted to get the point where there's going to be the greatest difference in the genetic makeup, the genes, all of that, which basically boils down to the same as saying the base sequences. Now, because we haven't actually gone and studied the structure of DNA in detail, and I know that many of you, your work in grade 9 and 10 didn't take in too much about the structure of DNA and how it replicates and all of that. So right now, base sequences might be confusing some people, uh, but it simply could be taken to mean the genetic code, the message that is given to direct what that organism becomes and how it behaves. And if two things have a close match, like we've been searching for, then there won't be uh, much difference between them and they would be close by on the cladogram. The greatest difference would be at point A. So that's the answer we're looking for. Now that question, the way it's written, I could see why some people had confusion with it. And this is, of course, a very important part of preparing for IB exams, is to get the questions themselves and look at them. Not to let that be your only business, but there are certain things just by seeing a few questions, it clarifies a few doubts or misconceptions or whatever it is you might have. This question is a good example. So you guys have it in mind now that for this type of question, this is what they're looking for. The more ancient you go, you go the, the more further back you go in this, what you might call like a family tree, the less the connection that you're going to have. In this question now, the diagram shows a part of a cladogram for invertebrate species from the Cambrian age, which is some ancient time. Um, on the cladogram, label the letter C at the point that shows the most recent common ancestor of Pambladurion and Fushianhuia. What, whatever you want to call those things, even if you can't pronounce those names, it really doesn't matter, you call them P and F. But to keep it realistic, of course, they have actually included actual names of these things. You just call it P and F, and you find P, which is up here. You trace it back, and you see it's branching out from this point here, right? And then F is all the way down here, but it feeds back all the way to the common ancestor with P, is where they branch off and it's right here. So this is where you should put an arrow and put in your letter C or label your letter C. That's the point where these two things share a common ancestor. So it's just about reading your cladogram. So the answer to this, C, identify which two species evolved most recently. Well, again, in reading cladograms, we assume that where you have the most recent branch and where you have the most branches that is where you have the most evolution so the species that evolved way back was that one at the top that begins with j and the two that evolved most recently are the l one here and the e one here again you don't have to know when the, the cambrian age was you don't have to know what any of these things are people can replace all of these names with numbers and it's going to be the same concept. The more branching that you have, the more recent the evolution. And the further back you go, the more differences that you have between groups like the one at the top and the two at the bottom. They are going to be the furthest apart. You would predict that if you put them in and you search for COX-1 sequences, you can be pretty confident that you would see the biggest difference between this one at the bottom 
and that one at the top because that is the basis of molecular cladistics.